Hi friends and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hello. My name's Jewel Jagambar and I'm a UK music producer. Today's video was requested by Hershey Bell after my video about mixing whisper vocals. It's all about dynamic EQ and in particular dynamic EQ on vocals. So in this video we're going to be having a look at what a dynamic EQ is and when we'd use it the general parameters of a dynamic EQ, and then we'll be having a look at how to use it on a vocal track. We're also going to be having a look at a great free dynamic EQ plugin that I just love. So if you want to learn a bit more about this, make sure you stay tuned and hit the subscribe button and notification bell for new videos every Wednesday. And things will never be the same. A dynamic EQ is best thought of as an EQ combined with a compressor. It allows us to make changes in a track's EQ once a certain threshold has been reached. Like how a normal compressor would make changes to the track's level once a certain threshold has been reached. And this means that our track will be EQ'd only when it's completely necessary. We won't have to apply a consistent and constant EQ across the whole track. There are many different instances that you may choose to use a dynamic EQ in, and it works brilliantly on lots of different instruments. For example, you may have a singer that begins to belt in the chorus of a song, and when this happens, their vocals may get a bit more shrill. So you want to EQ out that shrillness in the chorus, but you don't want the EQ that you do in the chorus to affect the sound of the vocals in the verse. And that's where a dynamic EQ comes in handy. Or perhaps you've got a bass guitar recording with a particularly nasty resonance or buildup of frequencies when a certain note is played. Or you may even have a recording of a full drum kit on one track. Now you may be happy with the sound of the kick drum, but not like the sound of the hi-hat, say. So you want to EQ that sound of the hi-hat. And you can do this with the dynamic EQ. The EQ will only kick in when the hi-hats hit and it won't affect the sound of the rest of the drum kit that much. The main parameters that you'll tend to find on a dynamic EQ are frequency, cue, gain, threshold, attack and release. So the frequency, cue and gain parameters come from the EQ part and the threshold, attack and release come from the compressor part. And luckily for us, all these parameters work in the same way that they do on the EQ and on the compressor. But let's have a quick recap of what they each do. The frequency determines which frequency is going to be the center of the range of frequencies that's changed by the plugin. The Q basically changes how large the range of frequencies edited is. The higher the Q value, the smaller the range or the group of frequencies. The gain determines if there's a cut or a boost of the chosen frequencies before the compression element of the plugin kicks in. The threshold will determine how present your chosen range of frequencies has to be in the track before they begin to get compressed. The attack time determines how quickly the frequencies are compressed after the threshold has been reached. And the release time determines how quickly the compressed frequencies return to being uncompressed. Obviously, different plugins of dynamic EQs will vary. Some may have more parameters, some may have less, and some may call these parameters different names. But in general, these are the parameters that you will tend to see, so I thought that these were the important ones to mention. Now let's have a look at a real life situation that would use a dynamic EQ in. I've got a completely dry vocal track that I think would benefit from having a dynamic EQ applied to it. So let's have a go. I feel so weak, I can't sleep, I hear your voice in everyone I meet. To my ear, this sounds a bit nasal at around 1200 Hz and a bit shrill between 4 and 5 kilohertz. As these aren't consistent problems throughout the whole track, we're going to fix this using a dynamic EQ. I've put a cut at 1200 Hz, which will be ducked down once it hits the threshold, and another cut between 4 and 5 kilohertz. Here's the track with and without the plugin. I feel so weak, I can't sleep, I hear your voice in everyone. I 
As you can hear, that's really solved the issue. But is using a dynamic EQ really worth it? Or can we stick to just using a bog standard normal static EQ? Well, I personally think that dynamic EQs are great. I think they sound a lot more subtle and natural because they're only working when they need to work. But so that you can choose for yourself and make your own decision, I've applied the exact same EQ settings as we did on the dynamic EQ to a normal channel EQ, and we'll hear the difference. I feel so weak, I can't sleep, I hear your voice in everyone I meet. I feel so weak, I can't sleep, I hear your voice in everyone I meet. Both EQs did the job in solving the problem, but I think that the dynamic EQ just made the vocals sound a lot more natural because it kept the frequency range I chose controlled and constant instead of cutting them completely throughout the track like the normal EQ did. For those of you Logic users out there, you're probably already aware by now that there is no stock dynamic EQ plugin, which can be a real pain. And if you use another DAW without a dynamic EQ in it, then this is for you too. Now you can spend your money and invest in a plugin like the Waves F6 Floating Band Dynamic EQ. I've heard some really great things about it. But there is another completely free, brilliant alternative. I've been using this dynamic EQ for a while now, and I've never had any problems with it. It's the Tokyo Dawn TDR Nova, and this is where you download it from. So all you have to do to download it is go to the website and choose the relevant format for your computer. And when you open the plugin in your DAW, it looks like this. And as you may notice, this is the plugin that I've been using throughout the video. It's really great and works so well that it's really hard to believe that it's free. So I would highly recommend this dynamic EQ. So that's how and when I'd use the dynamic EQ. Granted, using a dynamic EQ is a lot more complicated and takes a bit more time than using a normal EQ. However, I don't think it's that bad, as long as you understand how to use an EQ and how to use a compressor separately. You just then have to apply this knowledge to using a dynamic EQ. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments below and if there are any other videos you'd like to see in the future. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell and I will see you again soon.